Thank you, Richard. This is, this is on. Thank you, Richard. Um, that's all right, Mark. Good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think, this is, uh, I think this is the point in proceedings when everyone is expecting to be amused by the telling of funny stories. Um, has anyone got any? <laughs> Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by asking you a question. Has anyone ever noticed that the Japanese word for begin contains the English word marry? Anyone noticed? No. Well, I have. <laughs> and, you know, I think this is quite fitting because when you think about it, a lot of things begin with marriage. Yeah? Uh, for example, you've got uh, well, families begin with marriage and joint bank accounts. <laughs> And, um, oh, dinner parties, all right? It's usually married people who have dinner parties. At least, I've never been invited to one, and I can see no other reason for that. <laughs> um, and, of course, most importantly, babies. Uh, babies, children, right? Begin with marriage. So there you go. I think the Japanese people, clearly a very perceptive people, but perhaps not quite perceptive enough, because we all know that if you want to have babies, marriage by itself, is not enough. You got to have I think you all know. So, I think the Chinese people went one better on this one because the Chinese word for begin contains the English word for action. <laughs> um, Seriously, um, let me, let me start by saying that it's an honour for me to stand here before all of you today and, at least for the next few minutes, lead the celebrations as we pay tribute to not only this wonderful marriage, but also to a truly great man. Now, a man of uh, intelligence, honesty, generosity and integrity. A truly fantastic man. So I want to be a bit unorthodox at this point and propose an early toast in the speech. So everyone, could you please raise your glasses? To me! <laughs> Delicious. Good uh, um, enough about me, let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, actually, well, actually, no. Um, I want to start by telling you two quick things about myself. Number one. They are quick. Number one, my name is Mark. Very quick. And uh, number two, I'm a little bit odd. <laughs> but luckily, luckily this was something I noticed about myself at a very young age. And as a result, I always try to make a point of keeping friends close by who are very sensitive and level-headed. And I feel that Richard is probably the best example of such a friend. And in fact, given that Richard is the groom today, I feel a little bit weird being called best man. You know, I, I it's a bit of a strange title, I'm not quite sure why they call it that, because when you think about it, like, that's kind of custom made to make, to make the bride think she's just made a massive mistake. <laughs> I don't you like having the idea drilled into you that there are better men than your new husband. I don't know, you must be thinking, like, <laughs> and that's why, that's why, the, uh, what I want to do now is dispel that myth and make sure that everyone here knows that out of all the men I know, Richard Matters is the best. <laughs> In fact, this is completely true, my own mother once referred to Richard Matters as the boy you wish was your own son. <laughs> as her own son, I'm very glad she was not invited to this wedding. Thanks for not inviting mum. Um, anyway, anyway, that's why, as a title for this lecture, and it is a lecture, <laughs> um, I, hate it. I settled on Richard Matters, better than best, man. <laughs> so, title, done. Uh, next, I started thinking about what I was going to say today. And you know, at first I thought I could stand here and list Richard's achievements to you, but I, I also know that we all want to be home before Thursday evening. There's not enough time to do all that. Instead, here is an overview of Richard's life. Can you lock the doors? <laughs> a, br a brief overview in as few words and as little detail as possible. There you go. Richard made a promising start to life. I think at the beginning a lot of uh, at the beginning a lot of people saw great potential in him. And then, when he was just three years old, 
he met me. And everything kind of started to go downhill. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I was, I, was actually, I was quite a bad influence in those early years. Those teething years were a real drug-fueled hate. <laughs> you remember? Uh, well, I don't. I remember. Um, really Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, it was a shame that everything had started to go downhill, because I remember that at the time, I too saw the great potential in Richard. You know, he was somehow different to the other three-year-olds I knew at the time. He was... Oh, he was four. <laughs> Um, well, actually, actually, that reminds me. Speaking of school, I've got something to show you. Um, the the uh, the, um, the primary school myself and Richard went to. They didn't do yearbooks or anything like that. They did tea towels. Right, there you go. This is a this is a tea towel. Thank you very much. This yeah. is a tea towel from Market Bosworth yeah. Primary yeah. School. Have you got them? Yeah, I've got one. Yeah. Um, so basically, what you've got is a. Uh, you know, around. There we go. Um, you've got the face of every kid in the year on this tea towel. And actually, you can see how things have progressed in the last 20 years, because these are actually photographs. Which <laughs> <laughs> means some funny looking parents around. Uh, but here we go, can you hoist it up in the air? So there's, there's me, down there. Um, ah, here's Richard over here. And um, he's wearing a t-shirt that says, stay cool. <laughs> Good advice. Shame I never took it. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Happy children enjoying happy school. <laughs> so, so much. Well, if you like that, you're going to love prop number two. <laughs> uh, so over the next 14 or 15 years, Richard and myself sort of bumbled our way through school. We met a few other good friends along the way. And at the end of that time, Richard enrolled at Birmingham University. And as a result, anyone? As a result, the, the two of us, myself and Richard, stopped hanging out together quite so often. When things really started to pick up for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, during his time in Birmingham, Richard met the wonderful Michelle, and then, um, at the end of that, he eventually graduated and was named Student of the Year, which I think deserves a round of applause. Only in his department, though. What? <laughs> only in... Only in his department. <laughs> really? Oh, sorry. What do you mean, only in his department? Not like only in his department. Why didn't you talk? <laughs> no, that... <laughs> That's not... It's quite good. It's quite good. It's quite good. Um, well... Like I said... Like, like I said... <laughs> so, during that time, Richard met Michelle. And, um... Um, a few years back. A few years later. It says here they got married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you this later. I'm going to give you this later. Just test it. Um, anyway, so I think we can all agree Richard has done very well for himself. Um, this has been a problem. Is this, is this mine? I think this, is, this has been a problem that Richard's done. Sorry, it's been a problem for me lately because previously when I was thinking about what to say today, I mean, I was racking my brains trying to think of funny stories about Richard Manners. But, even though we've had a lot of good laughs together, to his credit, it's difficult to think of it where he was the focal point of a lot of laughter from the rest of us. And in fact, many of the stories that did spring to mind involved Richard, you know, somehow looking after myself or one of the other groups and was behaving unacceptably in some way. For example, there was the time when Tim, there's Tim, there. There was a time when, at the end of a night out once, Tim fell down a hill and cut his side up pretty badly. So Richard stayed up all night nursing him back to health, even though he had to go to university the next morning. And then there was a time when Joe, there's Joe, there's Joe, there. Joe got so drunk one time that he couldn't even stand up. So Richard stayed with him all night to make sure that under no circumstances should he try to stand up. <laughs> You know, come to think of it, mate, it was very gracious of you to involve us in this wedding today. I certainly wouldn't have invited us. Um, anyway, I, I racked and 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 I racked. And eventually, I was able to come up with one night, one occasion, where I think Richard was perhaps not quite so sensitive. You know how you have those nights in your life when something bad happens and you sort of hit a crossroads. And the next day, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself. So basically, pick the right path. And I think if there was one such night in Richard's life, it would be a night, 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 I keep saying night, sorry. It would be a night, the last one, during the long, hot summer of 2007. And what happened was, Tom, there's Tom, over there, 
Tom had a 21st birthday party at his parents' old house in Leicester. So you know, we're all there, we're all singing and da dancing and drinking and laughing and chatting and having a wonderful time. But about halfway into the evening, a few of us started to notice Richard, a bit sort of out of sorts. I'll give you an example of what I mean. At one point, he was trying to make a point about something. So he says to us, he says, so guys, you know how the world is 75,000 miles all the way around? So I said, I think it's 25,000. <laughs> Now, I was right, you know, but he was so outraged that he smashed the wine glass that he was holding. Yeah, it was really intense. Quite scary, actually. Um, I, by the way, I mention this small detail because to this day, this is the only time I have ever intellectually got the better of Richard. So clearly, I'm having a great evening. Richard, on the other hand, clearly not himself. And a few hours later, he was asleep on the floor of Tom's parents' living room, and he woke up and was a bit sick. That, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the, only, the only thing I could think of. Um, yeah, that was it. On the floor. And so... Yeah. Under the sofa, yeah. On, under the sofa. So anyway, um, and you know... You, it's, it's funny actually thinking about it, how this kind of thing has, has happened to well, me, for example, several times, and no one goes on about it. And then it happens to Richard once, and here I am <coughs> telling all his friends about it. <laughs> Victim of success, you could say. Um, anyway, the next morning, he, was, he felt terrible. He was very apologetic about the whole thing. Um, he offered to clean it up himself. Tom's mum was very nice about the whole thing. She went, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Like, she cleaned it up. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why, it didn't really work, and they never, they never actually got rid of the smell. And incidentally, Tom's mum and dad now live in Devon. <laughs> they are not here. <laughs> so, like I said, I think, I think this could have been the night that ruined Richard. Instead, he bounced back, swore to himself it would never happen again, to my knowledge it never has, and became the man you see the voice. <laughs> Why, but, but why, would I, why would I tell you such a story? Well, maybe to try and embarrass Richard a little bit. But it can't be that, because I now know that that's practically impossible. So more to the point, what I'm trying to convey with such a story is that for many of my childhood years, I was part of a very special group of friends involving Richard and the other groomsmen. And those are some extremely happy years, which I wouldn't change for any. You know, if I had to do it all again, I would try to make sure that it was exactly the same. And I think that when we were younger, we, we made a tacit agreement that as the years went by, we would grow old, but always be young. <laughs> I think the special thing, the special thing about Richard in all of this was that he was the one, the only one out of all of us, who realised one day, he thought, hang on. That agreement we made is a bit of a crap idea. <laughs> it is, in fact, very important to grow up. And I think we can all agree he has done a damn fine job of it. Uh, so I'm nearly done. Just, uh, just enough time for a toast, I think. And I'd like to first start by toasting the fabulous bridesmaids today. Ladies, you all look amazing. Just so you know, um, a number of the groomsmen, you're laughing already. A number of the groomsmen are single, but I'm the only one who is not often in the country. So, no strings. <laughs> you have no idea how much I've agonised over whether or not to tell that joke for about three weeks. Um, so I figured, sorry, I figured what I'd do is tell it, then apologise immediately. Sorry guys. Anyway. <laughs> And now, at long last, I think it's time for a serious toast. And uh, I, know, I, I know I've heavily focused on Richard throughout all of that, but we all know that beside every great man is an equally great woman. Um, at least that's my excuse for not being so great. <laughs> no, serious. It's a wonderful feeling. This, this is serious, by the way. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling to see my oldest friend now, now happily married to a woman who he clearly connects with on so many levels. And I think the, the picture of the two of them now, here today, is a picture of the perfect couple. 
So seriously now, can we all please raise our glasses? Guys, Richard, Michelle, you are fantastic. This is a very, very good day. And it is the beginning of a very long and happy life and marriage that you're going to spend together. To Richard and Michelle. To Richard and Michelle.